Hello and welcome to Advent of Code 2021, day 15. On day 14, I had to like pause my recording, figure out a solution on paper, and come back and explain what I figured out because it part two was, was a little bit rough uh, for me at least. I'm sure other people breezed through it. Uh, we'll see what happens on day 15, but I can tell you because the problems get harder, throughout the days as soon as i get stumped which which may happen at some point um last year i was only stumped on part two of one puzzle and part two of the final puzzle so uh we'll see but yeah i might uh you know stop making the videos if i <laughs> there's no point in watching me fail right <laughs> or maybe i'll upload the one failure video and that's it regardless uh if you don't know what the heck i'm talking about check the description underneath the YouTube video. Uh, let's go to day 15. Titan, you've almost reached the exit of the cave, but the walls are getting in closer together. Uh-oh. We can barely fit. The main problem is that the walls are covered in chitons. Yep. Chitons. Yay. Don't want to bump into those guys. The cavern is large, but the ceiling is low, restri restricting our motion to two dimensions. So we can go left, right, forward, and back, but we can't go up and down. The shape of the cavern resembles a square. A quick scan of your chitin density. Right, it's a risk level of maps. This is really similar to the to the smoke one from the other day. So it's probably a spin on that. We might be able to take that the the smoke basin code from the other day and reuse it. Let's find out. Uh, here's the puzzle input. is a field of numbers. Very well. Very well. You start in the top left position. Your destination is the bottom right position, and you cannot move diagonally. So you're only going orthogonally. Okay, so we got our, our orthogonal adjacent checks. The number at each position is the risk level. To determine the total risk of an entire path, add up the risk levels of each position you enter. Don't count the risk level of your starting position unless you enter it. Leaving it adds no risk to your total. This is feeling like a little digraph uh, situation, but it's not really a digraph because like you could conceivably, right? It's like you could, if you went one, one, if you went right down, you could go left to go to one, or you can go one, one, uh, and you can go right to go to three. So the, both directions are available. It's not a strict uh, digraph, though you could float, you know, express it as one, right? By duplicating nodes, right? So you'd be like, well, this one goes to a one, which goes to a six, which goes to a three. And this one goes to a one, which goes to a three, which goes to a different one that goes to a six, which goes to, and, and so on. Uh, or you could just put, you could actually just put two two different weighted directions on each link, right? So you could have these two ones. They're just blank nodes because being somewhere doesn't counter that in. It's only traveling. So you could just be like, well, this one has a direction that goes towards this one that costs one. And this one has a direction that goes towards this one that costs one, right? And so on. So you just put two directions on every graph linkage with the with the weight of the one that you're going to. So all the arrows pointing at the six have a value of six and all the ones pointing away from the six uh, have a value, well, they would have a value. One would have a one, one would have an eight, one would have a three. Anyway, uh, determine the total risk of the path, add up the risk levels of each position you enter. Don't count the risk level of your starting point. Find a path with the lowest total risk. Yep, in this example, a path with the lowest total risk is highlighted here. Okay, the total risk of this path is 40. What is the lowest total risk of any path from the top left to the bottom right? Okay, so yeah, we might need to do a, a digraph with a shortest path. Um, how would we build this graph? Uh, well, we'd have coordinates, right? And then we would have uh, coordinates that you could move to with weights. 
And then we would use a, a digraph shortest path. Right on. Okay. <laughs> they made me do this one in school. <laughs> it's been a long time. Let's see how they structured their graph. They had vertices. Uh, uh, they're making just a uh, zero for column and range vertices for row and range vertices. Okay. Yep, so they're making a 2D adjacency matrix. Yep. Oh, okay, so this is an adjacency matrix. Cool. Vertices. Okay. Minimum distance. Dijkstra. Shortest path algorithm. Yep. Uh, or we could try to do the A star one <laughs> if we wanted to. Uh, so, yeah, we got this one. Got a few examples. Let's find let's find the nicest looking one. Three. Is this the one we just looked at? Yep. Pathfinding algorithm. Yeah, we know. Oh, they're using default dict. I should have used default dict yesterday. I guess I forgot it existed. Because <laughs> I <laughs> um, don't think about it too often. I'll make this bigger so it's more readable. That sounds like a good idea. They got edges and they got weights. Yep. Oh, I see. So they're they're building up edges as a... You know, from X to A. Uh, oh, but see, their edge always has the same value in this case. Um, oh, from node to okay, so they don't know they're they're not they are directional because they're they're just specifying that from is always on the left half. So from X to A, and then they're gonna have another one that's A X. Uh, there should be an A X here. I guess they. I guess in their example, you can't go from A to X. There's no such direction, but we are going to have two directions. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it's been a long time since I've done any shortest path. I wonder if uh, A star would work. A star. Well, let's just read about A star. It's been a long. It's like that's like all I know. <laughs> it's been so long. <laughs> Uh, it's a graph traversal path. Uh, often use mini field. Yep, we know. Stores all generated nodes in memory. We're doing that anyway. Before it can pre-process the graph. Still the best solution in many cases. Okay. Uh, a star. Start goal. The set of discovered. Uh, oh, priority queue. For node n came from n is the node immediately preceding it. Um, hmm. How short a path from start to finish can be if it goes straight to, through n. Okay. Have to turn it out the most. Oh, we can try. We can try whatever one. No, we don't need to know about chitin anymore. Let's start by uh, loading this into a graph, right? So we're going to need our edges and our weights. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to go here. We're going to look at the first one. We're going to check all adjacent ones, right? And we're going to say, well, from 0, 0 to 0, 1 is a 1. And from 0, 0 to, well, it's going to be 0, 0 to 1, 0. Because this, this is x, and this is y, and this is 0, 0, and this is the biggest one, right? So 0, 0 to 0, 1 will have a directed weight of 1, and vice versa. We can do the vice versa, and that will actually, I guess if we iterate, we'll just do the outward, right? what it costs to leave that node. And then when we get to the end, it'll be complete no matter what. We won't, because if we do vice versa, it's like, okay, yeah, we'll get the both directions and then we'll come to here and we'll only have to do two. But 
yeah, if we just do all the outward ones, then we'll be good. Uh, and then from there, we can work on the algorithm. Okay. So let's get our test input. Boop. New folder, 15. New file. get a regular input. It's a big one. The big one kind of makes you want to go to the to the A star. We'll see. Uh-oh. Something happened in my paste. Paste worked better that time. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna build up this graph in in RAM, uh, and then <clears throat> we're gonna traverse it, I guess. All right? Okay. So let's get to that. Parse the input file. So parsing the input file. Um, we can actually go to a previous day, the origami one, the pathing one, the octopus one, the scoring one, the smoke basin. Yeah, the smoke basin is what we want. Oh, we don't want polymerous. Oh, we forgot to copy our... Uh, <laughs> Our template, and this is called chitin. Chitin one. Okay. No. Copy our smoke basin parser. Okay, and then we're gonna make our uh, our digraph. Uh, so we already got a two D array of ints. So, uh, int nodes comes in. We'll say self dot graph equals self dot uh, process in nodes. Okay. Uh, so uh, def process in nodes self in. So the graph is going to be equal to, uh, remember we're gonna do like this from to thing, right? Uh, A star, icon, let's see. Yep, G, the cost path from the start node to the current node, the actual cost path from the current node to the goal node, okay? Place the starting node to open, remove the node from open. Of all the successors, put them into open. Okay, so just what kind of data structure are we going to need for this? Um, I guess you're going to need from, to, and then wait, right? Oh, so they're go they're doing like this from, and then all the possible twos with weights on each two. Okay, this this isn't bad. This one isn't bad at all. Um, so we can do one like that. So it's going to be a dictionary. Oh, 
Oops. Yeah, I like this. This this is the best uh, example I've seen. Okay. Yeah, they're doing a dictionary with frums as the keys. Okay. So we're going to go for uh, y in the range of um, int nodes, the length of int nodes, right? So in this case, the length of int nodes in our test input is going to be 10. So it'll go from 0 to 9. And then for x in range, oh, we need the width. Um, we'll just say row equals int nodes y, right? Then for x in range, well, for, we can actually do this. For row in, enumerate, maybe we could have done it this way in an earlier day. What are you complaining about? Okay. Uh, all right, so uh, for let's just test that out a little bit. A list of lists, one, one uh, two, three. This should work the way I think. Yep, index, uh, index list, index list. So this is the y index, and then for x index column in enumerate the row. All right. So then we need all adjacencies. So do we have that in our smoke basin? Check all adjacencies. Where did we have? That's not a great one. I, I wasn't happy with this one. Uh, origami, do that have adjacencies? No. Pathing? No. Octopuses? Octopuses had adjacencies. Okay. So get adjacencies of a coordinate, uh, x, y, right? x delta, y delta. fx equals x plus xd, right? Uh, as long as it's greater than 0. And oh, well, this one was hard locked on 10. So we actually need a width and a height uh, to figure out um, right? Uh, yeah. Maybe we can just skip on an index error. We can just ignore index on an index error, just skip. Uh, and as long as we stay above zero, or above, above negative, right, zero or greater, we're okay. So uh, what we want to do here is just want to pass in an x, y, right? Uh, x, y. And then for x delta, for y delta, Right, fx, F, oh, we'll say, uh, we still need something to return. Okay. 
uh, x plus x delta, y plus y delta. Uh, see, we don't need to worry about uh, revisiting, right? So I guess it doesn't say whether or not you're allowed to revisit an already visited spot, but like you never would because there's no bear, there's no walls or anything, there's no searching, right? It's like you're just if you're looking for the shortest path, revisiting is is just never going to happen, right? Just naturally, so you don't need to put in any special rule about that. So it's okay to put in directions, you know, pointing back at where you already were. Okay, so x is good if uh, uh, is f of x is greater than zero. As long as it's greater than or equal to zero, it's good, right? We're gonna go with that. Cores dot pend, right, and then remove itself and return that. Okay, so then uh, for coordinate in. Get adjacencies, x, y. We'll move this one up, actually. Eh, that's fine. Okay, so for every coordinate in the adjacencies, what we're going to do uh, Oh, we're going to say, uh, the node is equal to right, a list, a list of connections, right? So the node is equal to a list of connections. Uh, and we're going to try, because we might, because using x to avoid having to check width and height, uh, well, actually, what we can do is we can say, um, Well, we can know the height. Uh, height is equal to the length of int nodes, right? Width is equal to the length of the row. These are going to be... It's this is slightly inefficient because this width will keep getting rewritten on every row, but that's that's fine. It's not a big deal. Okay, so for coordinate in self dot get adjacencies x y. All right, so now we can avoid the try because we can say uh, if x right rather than doing the 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 right we can do the zero bounds here, but here we can do the the width height bounds because our test input is different from our um, you know, and I didn't want to, I could pass the width and height into here and then do the check. I guess we can do that also. All right, let's do that then. And uh, fx is less than the height, All right? And Fy is less than oh, width. Okay, fine. We'll do it that way. Um, so you want x to be greater than or equal to zero, but it has to be less than the width. If it's equal to the width, right? So if, right. So let's say you have a, a ten width, then the length of the the row is going to be ten, but nine is the final index. So it's only good if it's less than. The, the, the width or the height. Okay, so that's taken care of. So for each coordinate, uh, node.append, all right, a tuple. These are tuples, yep, a tuple. And the first half of the tuple is going to be the destination value. Uh, so the destination coordinate is going to be uh, oh, for Destination X, destination Y. Because get adjacencies gives you a list of coordinates, right? So then for each coordinate, we can rip out the X and Y. 
Uh, actually, we don't need to do that. We can just say node.append, a tuple of the coordinate and the int nodes. Uh, I think we should actually. Comma, int nodes. Actually, we don't need, we do, we can do this. We can just do it, do it, it nodes. Oh, uh, no, we can't, okay. Go, go back. <laughs> uh, I just keep changing my, because I need it in both formats is the problem. Okay. Come, uh. Nodes, I just mean Y, X. Remember, got got to remember to reverse this because the rows come before the col the the columns come before the whatever. <laughs> um. All right, let's check our graph first. Okay. Why didn't we hit the breakpoint? Oh, I know why we didn't hit the uh, breakpoint. It's because we didn't actually call it. Uh. That's why. X is not defined. Oh, it's X because I made it index. That's why. Okay. Oh, I know why. Because we never added the node to the graph. That's why. Uh, we want to say a graph. There we go. There we go. Okay, so let's take a look and make sure it's correct. So from zero, zero, right? We can go to zero, one, one, zero, or one, one. Let's open the test input actually and do a split. Oh, that's not gonna work, okay. Well, so from zero, zero, that's where we are, right? We have three places we can go. We can go to zero, one, which will cost us one. We can go to one, zero, which will cost us one. Uh, one, one, which will cost us three. So you actually need to remove the diagonals. Um, we're not allowed to do diagonals. So the, yeah, because I guess on the, the octopus is one, we were doing diagonals. So actually... We don't want to do every combination. We just want to do x plus 1, y plus 1, x minus 1, x plus. OK. Um, in that case, I think we can just, uh, because it's only orthogonal, we can do this.
right? X plus one, X minus one. <laughs> is X good? If X good, chords dot append, uh, X, oh, FX comma Y. And then we can repeat the same thing Just change this to height, y, 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 f, y, y. We don't need to do chords remove. OK. So yeah. So one to the right, one to the left, one up, one down. If they're zero and they're within the height and they're in bounds, okay, let's try again. Take a look. Yep. So we can go from start at zero, zero. We can go to the one or to the one. All right, let's go check zero, one. Zero, one, zero, one, zero. It should be here somewhere. Here it is. So from zero, one, we can go back to the start, which will cost us one, right? We can go, uh, oh no, zero, one is here. Cause is this, it's right, this is X. This, this is one, zero, let's go to one, zero. So one, zero, from one, zero, we can go back to the start at a cost of one. We can go to uh, down here at a cost of three. Or we can go to here at a cost of six, right? So at each node, there's a list of places that you can go next and how much it costs to go to each one. And it's correct. Fantastic. Okay. So now we can implement the A star algorithm as follows. Let's uh, do a split screen. Let's close the left-hand panel here. Okay. So the uh, let open list equal an empty list of nodes, close list equal an empty list of nodes. Put start node in the open list. While the open list is not empty, right? Current node should equal the node, well, I guess they mean adjacent node with the, let, the least. Um, current node should equal the node with the least F value, right? F, the actual cost path from the start node to the goal node. Um, hmm. uh, right? Uh, remove current node from the open list. Add current node to the closed list. If current node is the goal, you found the exit. Let children of the current node equal the adjacent nodes. Let current node equal the node with the least F value. Does it mean adjacent node or Let's look at some code. Oh, I see. Um, find a node here. Well, here's what they mean. Find a node with the lowest value of F within the open list. So look at all the nodes in the open list, right? And see which one has traveled the least so far. Is that's what they're saying? Okay. So uh, let's just start coding this. Okay. So the shortest path, we're going to need a self uh, start end coordinate. Um, Q 
Okay, we'll start with just that. Okay, so open list, open list, empty list of nodes. Closed list is an empty list of nodes. Put the start node into the open list. So, uh, and it's going to have an F, however. So, the open list should actually be a dictionary, and the dictionary will contain the nodes and their F values. So, open list uh, append, right? The start node, which is going to be an XY pair. Oh, not append. Open list start is going to equal to zero. Okay. Okay. While uh, the length of open list is greater than zero. Okay. So even though it's a dictionary, it's it is Python, so it should have a length. No, uh, I guess you get the idea. I'm pretty sure it's going to work. If it doesn't work, we'll find out later, using a dictionary instead of a list for the open list. Um, we could always make it a uh, a list of tuples as well. Maybe we should just do that. Append uh, a tuple. That is the start, comma, the F, right? So everything in the open list is going to be a coordinate pair with an F value. Okay. Uh, let the current node equal the node with the least F value. So we got to sort, we got to find the lowest, um, right? Uh, def uh, lowest val in. Dict, uh, uh, lowest val in list. I kind of want to go back to my dictionary. Um, let children of the current node. I want to go back to my dictionary. Lowest key in dict. Well, we'll call it uh, lowest F in list, uh, just to make it more contextually correct. But yeah, I want to go back to my dictionary method. Uh, start equals zero. Okay. Uh, so we did this on previous days, I'm pretty sure. Uh, we'll Google it again. Python dictionary key with lowest value. We have done this on a previous day. Right, min key dot get. That was what it was. So actually, we don't need a function because that's so short. Um, so min of open list key equals open list dot get. That's the current node. Remove. The current node is the node with the least F value. Remove the current node from the open list. Open list.remove current node. Cool. OK. Uh, if current node is goal, if current node is equal to end, you found the exit, in which case we're going to return the, uh, we just removed. The current node from the list. Uh, so we no longer have its uh, F value here. 
Let's just save it in that case. Yeah, before we remove it, I guess there's no harm in uh, putting the removal here instead. Um, current node is the end. We're going to return current node end. Open list current node, which is going to be the F, the F value. Uh, actually, we only need to return the F value. Okay. All right. Uh, anyway, open list remove. Okay, so we just change the order on that. It doesn't matter. So, uh, and then closed list append. Okay. Cool. Let children of the current node equal the adjacent nodes. Get adjacencies of current node. Do we need to put the F into the closed list? I think we will we need to save the F into the closed list. Uh, let's see. The current node is the stop. All right, we start again from the start. If n equals stop, reconst path, small part n. What's this reconst path they've got going on here? While par n, par contains adjacent mapping of all nodes, okay. Path dot append n. Reverse. What's this reverse function they've got? Oh, they're just flipping. Reconst path is a list. They're just reversing it. Okay. While I'm trying to figure out what's going on here. If the current node is the stop, we start again from the start. While par n, an adjacency mapping of all nodes. Okay. So while, so par n is going to be, it starts out as stop. So reconst path dot append. Okay. So go through all of the um, adjacencies. Reconst path. Uh, uh, what is going on here? Okay, append. That well, it's not equal. So the reconstituted path is going to append everything except the stop, right? And then. 
I don't, why, I don't understand what this is doing. <laughs> if the current node is the stop, start again from the start. And this is the reconstituted path. Right. Uh, this is going to be a list of all the nodes, but how does this one work? While par contains an adjacency mapping of all nodes. It's a dictionary, and it says, yeah, this node is adjacent to that node. So while you're going to go through... Uh, no, you're not gonna. You're not. You're not iterating through. You just have this path. Okay. While. Ah, what did you do? You just suddenly became light mode, out of nowhere. Okay, that's interesting. Just immediately light mode. Okay. Um. While. The, current node, right? N, uh, because n is already and then n is stopped. So while the nodes adjacent to n are not equal to n, append n, okay, so we add at the, the end, then n is equal to whatever is adjacent to itself. Oh, because Par contains an adjacency mapping of all nodes, and start is equal to, they're making start adjacent to itself here, right? Right, par start equals start. So the only time you're gonna get that sort of self-adjacency is when par n is equal to n. So you're basically, Right. As soon as it is, right, you're not, right, then they're appending start and then reversing it, and that's the path uh, going backwards and then return it. Okay, so we don't need to, we don't need to, to do this quite yet because we're just going to be returning um, the... You know, we could go and add that later, but for now we don't need to do that. So, uh, let's go back up here. Okay, we found the exit, great. So, uh, adjacent nodes. Okay, so for each child in the children. So for a node in, let's say for a child in adjacent nodes. Uh, so actually, wait, those adjacent nodes, we don't need to call get adjacencies because we have, that's that's what our graph is going to be. Children in self dot uh, graph. Right? The graph itself is a dictionary containing a list of adjacencies. So actually it's for children. Uh, and each child is actually going to be a coordinate and a weight. Uh, so it's a child coordinate and a child weight, right? Where, where from here, where we are, the current node, right? Where can we go and how much will it cost to go there? Uh, if child is in the closed list. So if child cord is in closed list, Continue to the beginning of for loop. Continue. Right? Uh, okay. So the child G is the current node G plus the distance between the child and current. So if we get neighbors, if the current node is not present in both the open list and the closed list, if the current node is not in the open list and the closed list, 
add it to the open list, and note n as its par. I hate how they're just, they're like, par, poo. It's used, you know, people got a code like I do, where I got English words, right? Um, you know? No, we don't need this one anymore, right? The actual cost path from the start node to the current node is the G. Aha. Okay. So we can do that. Um, H, the actual cost path from the current node to the goal node. And F, the actual cost path from the start node to the goal node. G, H, F. Okay. Distance from child to end. We don't know that yet, right? How do we know the 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 H? Um, we don't know the H yet here because uh, we haven't gotten to the end yet. Open lists, nodes, positions. So I guess we, we got to figure out their poos and their pars. Poo has the present distances from the start to all other nodes. The default value is plus infinity. Okay. Um, Par contains an adjacency mapping of all nodes. Oh, so they're actually their open list is a set and their closed list is a set. Oh, that makes sense, actually, because Oh, I see. They're not trying to be like me where I'm storing values on the list, right? They're just storing it it separately. Um in these separate dictionaries. Right, like we'll store the Fs in like it's a dictionary. This is a dictionary of uh, you know distances from start to all the nodes. This is a dictionary just of F values. This is like an F value lookup, right? Uh, you know, this is a this is an adjacency mapping. We don't need that one, uh, but it looks like they're making things adjacent. They're they're modifying their adjacency map as they go. So maybe we'll maybe we'll do that too. All right. Let's. I. I can't. I, all right. So let's. You know, we're gonna basically copy this, but make it better. Uh, all right. So the open list is a set, and in the set is already the start. All right. And the closed list is a different set. There we go. Okay. So then, while well, the length of the open list. Oh, and we're gonna make our our well, who. Right, so, so poo is f values, and then adjacency map. All right, there we go. No poo and par business. So the f values of the start is equal to zero, and the adjacency map of the start is equal to the start. There we go. Just like they have it. Okay, so. Uh, n equals none. So for n, their n is current node here, right? That's what they're using n as, is current node. Um, if n is none, right, path does not exist. But uh, I guess that would never happen. Wow, there's something wrong with this website and the way it colors. I'll re reload it. Okay. <laughs> um, Find a node with the lowest value of f. So actually, with that, um, 
All right. Current node is the minimum in the open list, right? Uh, oh no, we want to find the minimum f value. Find a node with the lowest value of f. So the key is f values. There we go. Current node is the one with the least f value. So we're able to write it a lot smaller than this. Um, okay. If current node equal uh, is equal to the end, okay, uh, yeah, so now we can copy the reconstitution path thing. So the path, so the complete path, well, the shortest path, while adjacency met. So this is going to become much easier to read now that I have a current node equal to the current node. So this is basically saying, hey, right? when is adjacency map current node equal to the current node? When is this while loop going to start? When we're looking for the adjacency map from the start, right, is equal to the start. Therefore, um, right, it's like, oh, we've got to the start, the only, right? So therefore, right, we've, we've hit the beginning. Don't keep looking to add more points to the path. Uh, Shortest path dot append current node and then adjacency map. Oh, current node is equal to the adjacency map current node. All right, because basically what's happening is there, this adjacency map, as the algorithm is happening down here. Right? Is they're removing, they're adding and removing adjacencies. So the final adjacency map is actually sort of the, the path. It is the path, right? I think that's what I didn't understand because their shitty variable naming uh, <laughs> is that this adjacency map is actually, this is the final path, right? They're just, you know, treating it as this mapping. And here, this is turning it from a dictionary into uh, a list, an ordered list that is an order by what's adjacent, um, right? So, for example, right, it's it's really a, uh, it's like a, it's like it's not really an adjacency map. It's like a used, it's like a used paths thing. It's like oh, we went from, you know, zero zero. We went from zero zero to zero one. Well, where else did we go, right? Well, at, you went from zero zero to zero zero. That's all. That's like in there from the start, right? That's like our start, right? We did that, then we did that, right? Then we went from zero one to like you know one one, and 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 so on, right? So this is what this is gonna look like, uh, and so this part here is simply taking all these adjacencies, lining them up into a list of which coordinates were visited in which order. Right? So actually we can do, we can do that. We can start it out like that actually, okay. It's the same thing, I just moved it to one line. Now I understand what that code is doing, okay. Anyway, uh, so the current node is equal to the adjacency map current node. Okay. Uh, yeah. And then uh, shortest path to append start, shortest path to reverse. Uh, return we want the shortest uh, path we also want the F the F value 
And that final F value is going to be here. This current node, the min F values dot get. Um, so we want F values dot get. Uh, final, uh, final cost is equal to F values dot get current node. Okay, there we go. We got our A star. Okay, next part uh, goes here. Great. For all the neighbors of the current node. Okay. For neighbor in self.graph current node. So that's for all the neighbors, right? And the neighbors are actually split up into the uh, neighbor and then the cost to go to that neighbor. Uh, okay, if the current node is not in the open list and the close list, add it to the open list and note N as its part. Oh, partner. Partner, I guess. Um, Okay. So, if neighbor not in open list and neighbor not in closed list, so it's not open or closed yet, uh, open list add neighbor. Because remember, these are, these are sets now we're using here for open list and closed list. What are you complaining about? Closed list is going to be used. It's used right there. <laughs> um, okay, go away. Okay. Open list, add the neighbor. Uh, par, so our par is our adjacency map. So adjacency map. Right, the neighbor, right, so you're saying, hey, look, you know, the neighbor is, is adjacent to, if we look up the neighbor, right, because it's, it's a backwards adjacency map, I guess, right, you know, the start goes to the start if you're going backwards. So if you go from the neighbor backwards, you go to the current node that we're currently branching out from, okay, and then foo is for is the f values so f values of the neighbor right is equal to the f values of the current node we're using that the uh, current f is equal to f values dot get F. Current F. Right? Okay. Mm. Uh, current F plus, right, the weight, which is the cost. The cost here. The cost to go to this neighbor. Right? So to go, yeah, so the, the cost of reaching this neighbor is the cost of everything that came before it, so whatever the current node's cost was, plus the additional cost of visiting this new neighbor. Okay? Great. So if this neighbor is in either the open list or the closed list, okay, so it, it was in one of the list, right? So now, is it quicker to first visit N than M? And if it is, update the data. If the node was in the closed list, move it to the open list. So, like, was it faster? Okay, so if the F values of the neighbor is greater than the F values of the, uh, oh, else, right? So here we said, okay, we haven't even tried this path, 
right? Uh, F values of the neighbor plus the cost, right? In that case, uh, no, the F value of N is always going to be is current F. So if the neighbor's cost is greater than, right, because the, the neighbor is already, so in this case, so this is where it's a new neighbor we've never, we don't even know what they cost, right? Um, we're adding them to the open list as a possibility. This is a neighbor where they're in the open list or the closed list already, right? They're in there somewhere. So if they're in there somewhere, we can just look up, right, what it cost we, we already reached that neighbor by some other means, and we can say, okay, well, what did it cost us to reach that neighbor, right? Was it more expensive when we, we reached that neighbor by some other path besides the one we're checking right now? When we reached that neighbor, what was the cost of reaching it greater than the cost of the path we just used to reach the same neighbor, right? So this was some other way of reaching this neighbor, and this is our current way of reaching this neighbor, right? Current F plus cost. If the old way was worse, we're going to say, all right, well, forget that old way, right? This is how much it costs to reach that neighbor, right? The short, this is the shortest cost of reaching that neighbor is this new one. And also, right, the adjacency, uh, the adjacency map right, uh, to reach that neighbor, right? The way to reach that neighbor is not from whatever way you reached it earlier, but to go there from the current node. Oh, no, the, uh, like that. Yeah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> Uh, right. So yeah, if the old way, if the old path we found to get to this neighbor is worse than the path we just took, then we're going to overwrite it. We're going to say, all right, well, the way to reach that neighbor is from go through our current node. That's the way to reach that neighbor. And also the cost is lower. If the old way of getting to this neighbor, right, uh, was, you know, less than or equal, right? then we're just not going to consider the current path of reaching that neighbor, right? Okay. Okay, and then if the neighbor is in the closed list, closed list dot remove the neighbor and closed list, oh, open list dot add the neighbor. Okay, so we found a better path to get to this neighbor. If they were in the closed list before, right? If they were in the closed list, we're going to get them out of there and move them to the open list because it's like, well, we found <laughs> we found a new way to, <laughs> to get there, right? Um, okay, and now... Once all your neighbors have been checked, so this is, remember, this is for each neighbor. So once all the neighbors have been checked of a particular node, right, then remove that node and then add to the closed list. So Basically, right, so we've got our starting node starts in the open in the open list, and the closed list starts out with nothing, right? Uh, 
And so we check each node, right? We're, we're checking the neighbors of you know our current node, which is just the start node. And as we check neighbors, right, we're going to be adding them to the open the open list of like this is a possible this is a possible path, right? Now, you know, we might end up in the course of okay, well, we've already checked you know zero comma one. Well, we might you know eventually we might arrive at you know we started with zero zero, we check zero one, we arrive at you know a one one. And zero one shows up as a neighbor again. We already checked going through zero one right before directly. We we're, were leaving. We we're checked all those paths, but there might be paths that go back to zero one, and therefore zero one might have been on the closed list because we already looped right over zero one. But then it might show up as again as a as a neighbor of yet another place. In which case, that's why it can get popped back to the open list again. Right, so I have a feeling this will work. Um, we're gonna say that path equals, uh, so it's graph dot shortest path from start to end, and it's path cost. So, uh, path cost equals uh, graph dot shortest path from the start. Oh, the end. Oh. Um, is our is our width and our height here? You know what we're gonna do? Uh, all right, we've already processed the graph here. Uh. If there we go. If self dot width is none. There you go. Width width is over here. It's getting long. Bring it over. Get over here. Okay, there we go. It's actually, um, do this um oh it's not self equals none <laughs> start and end okay so if start is none well actually we can do this we can do that right if end is none and equals self dot width minus one comma self dot height minus one. There you go. That's the ending node you're trying to reach. Yep. Okay. So now we can just say path equals cost dot shortest path. Part one result is equal uh we'll just print path right cost break all right we don't need well we'll keep this around all right let's go do you have a problem or not oh we have a breakpoint here And key error zero zero. What's that all about? Closed list dot add. Here. Hmm. 
that's our oh we can get rid of the print graph um print path okay Let's figure out what this key error is on a set key error ah open list dot remove current node i see um That's the key. The key error is the open list remove. N four. So for some reason, zero zero isn't in the open list at this point. It's not. Uh, open list, okay, let's see here. So it already got removed somehow. It was already removed somehow. And now it's being removed again. All right, let's let's do uh, some print statements for debugging. Uh, Okay, let's try that. So the open starts as one gets a. Uh, why are we still printing the graph? Where is that happening? There it is. Okay, let's stop again. Okay, great. All right, so the open list comes in with a one, zero, zero, one, and zero, zero, right? And the closed one is empty. We come around. And open is one, zero, zero, one. Closed is, so the, the yeah, we checked zero, zero already on the previous time. So the neighbors are open. And the zero zero is closed. Okay. And then we hit the error because we're trying to remove the current node. The current node somehow is still um right the minimum F value. Yeah, the minimum the so that it's still it shouldn't be in there anymore is what I'm saying is that the current node should be the um right should be either one zero or zero one it shouldn't be zero zero again that's that's pointless so that's what's happening here uh, current node f values yeah so you can see that the cost of going to those is one um right. And this one's still, still hanging back in there. So let's see, why is that happening? Uh, 
Is this different than what I wrote? This part? Effectively? So. Uh, let's see. Let's put it in the open list. Oh, I see. They're only find a node in the open list. Let current node equal the node with the least F value. But it's actually, the truth is that it's find a node with the lowest F value in the open list. Um... So we have to filter the F values first, right? Before, um, right? Let's see, graph in it, get neighbors h. This heuristic function which having equal values for all nodes. Okay. We don't need that. Uh, okay, so. So if n is none or All right, so we're gonna find the we would just want to filter this one by only only open nodes when we're setting the current node, right? Which at the start should be obviously start. So filter the f values by ones that are in the open list. Uh, let's get the terminal. So let's pretend we have a dictionary of a one b two. Oops. So have a dictionary of uh, A, 1, B, 2, right? And we already learned we have that code for the min D key equals D dot get. Oh. Is A, because A is less than B. Yeah, A is 1, B is 2. Perfect. But now we want to filter out A. So filter, oh, we want to filter only B, right? So filter is B. Uh, so we want to min of a D if D is in filter. Eh. We want to say, uh, X, Y, well, coordinate F for coordinate comma F in D to items if chord is in filter. There you go. That's how we're going to write that. We do a dictionary comprehension to filter only the ones that are in the open list and then get the minimum. Okay, get down there. Because the min of uh, F, oh, here's our dictionary comprehension. Uh, coordinate F, for coordinate f in f values the items if coordinate is in the open list. Colon f. In f values the items if the coordinates in the open list. And then sort it that way. Okay. Let's try again one more time. 
Open, closed, open, closed, open, closed, open, closed, open, closed. We got our breakpoint. What's our path? Okay, looks like we have a path. And what is the question that was actually being asked of us originally? The lowest total risk of any path should be 40. Okay, we can put this back into there. Get over here. And our cost is 40. The A star algorithm worked. It took a little while to, to implement it, but we got there. Okay. Hopefully, <laughs> the fact that we implemented A star is going to make part two just work. Right? Right? Please? <laughs> okay. But anyway, uh, let's me remove any stray print statements we got. Any breakpoints we got hanging out. Okay. I nice said five. Part one, 40. And now we can switch to um, regular input.txt instead of test input.txt. And it shouldn't take that long. 824. Eight twenty four. That's the right answer. Terrific. Okay, part two. We found it how to find, find your way out. The entire cave is actually five times larger in both dimensions than you thought. The area you scanned is just one tile in a five by five tile that forms the full map. Your original map tile repeats to the right and downward. Each time the tile repeats to the right or downward, all of its risk levels are one higher. We need to make a bigger, we need to make a bigger map and then run the same shortest path. Okay, hopefully A star will be fast enough. <laughs> Uh, I, I sure hope it is. Um, our one tile, then the tile immediately up or left of it. Risk levels above nine wrap around to one. So if your original map had some position with a risk level of eight, then that same position on each of the t 25 total tiles would be as follows. Uh, if your original map had some position with a risk level of eight, that same position, so eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, I see. So that same position on, so here's one tile, the tile below it, that same position would be a nine, right? That same position would be a one, two, three. Okay. Each single digit above corresponds to the example position with a value of eight and the top left tile because the full map is actually five times larger in both dimensions. Here's the full map, right? Equip with the full map, find the path, right? Total risk. Hope A star is fast enough um, on that giant map. Uh, okay, we're gonna have to multiply our thing here. So the way we're gonna do this is right we've got eh okay uh so we'll translate from our current map into a final map right so we'll, we'll we can just do work we can do this on the parsed input actually uh so actually what we want to do is you want to do a Come here, you. Okay. Int nodes. Process int nodes. Are we doing it? We're not writing to int nodes at all. Therefore, it shouldn't be messed up. There is no, int nodes never gets written to. It only gets read from. Okay. So we can make a function, uh, multiply grid grid okay so the grid is already a list of 2d integers um and so therefore 
uh, what we can do, the factor of five, right? Uh, four. What's a good way to do this? Okay, so we go through our existing grid. Uh, and then, so you've got it, we got this grid, it's a list of lists, right? Like this. So go to our first list, and we're gonna be making a new list that's five times wider, right? So it's going to equal to the current list, and then a copy of the current list where everything is up by 1, but 9 wraps around. And then a copy of the current list where everything is up by 1 again, and everything wraps around, and so on. So 5 times wider, right? Uh, and then when we get to the next row, we're going to be... Uh, so actually what we can do... We can do this with enumeration, um, right? So new grid. Okay. Uh, so for uh, uh, for column in in the original grid. Uh, for row in the column. No. It's going to be for row column. Okay, so for row for each column in the oh, for each row in the grid, we've got a new row that we're going to be right? Uh, and then for each column in the row, uh, for each row in the grid, Mm -mm. For uh, F in range vector, so five times for column in the row, uh, So add wrap, uh, add wrap, uh, num start add. Uh, okay, so we want to. How do we wrap it around? It's gonna be mod ten. Is modulus ten? I think gonna work. We can maybe we can just use modulus ten, right? Uh, let's try modulus ten. I believe. So let's get the terminal. So three uh, modulus ten is three. Eleven modulus ten is one. Yep. Ten modulus ten is zero. I think modulus ten is gonna work. Uh, it says, so, 9 wraps around to 1, though. Does that mean it's modulus 9? 10 modulus 9 should be 1. 1 modulus 9 should be 1. Right. 9 modulus 9 is going to be 0, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to be 0. Uh, well, 9 modulus 9 should be 9, right? So it's like if we add up our numbers and we hit, hit a 9, we want to keep a 9. If we, right? So 9 modulus 10. So every number is going to let us keep, right? But if we get like 13 modulus 10, we don't want a 3, we want a 2. To wrap around. Mm. 
nines become ones is the annoying part, right? Nine wraps around to one. If nine wrapped around to zero, this would be so easy, right? Uh, but nine wraps around to one instead. Uh, hmm. Nine wraps around to one instead. Guess we just had to write a function. Um, if num is greater than 10, uh, if the number is less than 10, return the number. Else, okay. Otherwise, so if it's like, uh, mm -mm. if it's 10, we want to subtract 9, right? We want to basically subtract 9 until the number is less than 10. So while the number is greater than 10, num equals num minus 9, return num. Let's try that. So just keep subtracting 9s, uh, right? While num is, uh, num is greater than 10, num, uh, num minus equals 9, return num. So wrap a 10. Oh, while num is greater than 9. There we go. So we wrap a 10. We get a 1. We wrap an 11. We get a 12. When we wrap a 21. We should get like a 2, a 3. Yes, that makes sense. If it's an 18, you'd get a 9 again. Yep, because if 10 is 1... Then 11 is 2, 13 is 4, 15 is 6, 17 is 8, and 18 is 9, and then 19 is 1, and then 20 should be 2. Yep. Okay, so that this wrap function works. Okay, so we got that down. So through our row, for each column in the row... New row, not append. For uh, row val. Oh, no, for each row in the grid. For f in range. Y. There we go. Fx in range factor. Here we go. So for each row in the grid, right, we're going to make five times as many rows. And then for each we're going to go five times as wide for each column in the row. New row dot, uh, okay, uh, original val is equal to grid. Oh, for each column in the row. Column is just going to be the actual value. So, uh, new row. Pend uh, we'll call it wrap nine. Wrap nine, 
column plus fx plus fy. So once we got our new row, new grid uh, append row, turn new grid. Okay, I think that will multiply the grid successfully. Let's test that out um, just simple like. Uh, so let's test our wrap nine first. Good. Okay, now let's test a grid. So let's look at our parsed input. Looks like that. Okay, so let's make a different parsed input. Let's make a, a test grid. Zero, one. Just two by two by two. Two, three. And then we'll multiply grid. Oh, okay. So 0, 1, 2, 3, sure enough. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 3, 4, 5, 3, 4, 5. Uh, hold on. <laughs> 0, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 7. One, two, three, four, two, three, four, five, two, five, zero, one, two, three, four, eight, nine, one, two. Yep, we got the wrapping. It, lo it looks like it works. Looks like it's working. Now, will the A star algorithm be able to handle? Oh, we forgot to copy this to a second file again. Let's uh, handle that. There we go. Get out of here. Okay, we got all that taken care of. Uh, we got our test input. So, <laughs> the total risk is 315, all right? 315 on part two. Three fifteen. No part. Get out of here. Part one. Okay. Three fifteen for part two. 
on the test input. Oh, look how fast that A star went. I'm feeling good. Okay, and it gave the right answer. So let's switch to input.txt. And how long is it going to take? Please finish. Please finish. I'm confident it will finish soon enough. Come on, you can do it. You can do it, computer. I know it's big. <laughs> You'll get there eventually. If you don't, if this doesn't work, I have no other option. I'm just gonna give up. Okay, so uh, got the right answer for part two here, <laughs> but I didn't do it. Uh, I didn't figure it out on my own. I went and I searched for, you know, what was wrong, and I learned something new today. I learned about this thing called the heap queue, right? So, nothing I did really. Here's my part one. Nothing I did here was wrong. It was giving out the correct answers, but all my slowness was up in here, right? In this part. What was happening was that every time I came through the loop, right? I was saying, okay, well, what what's the best node, right? Of all the possibilities that I have, where to go, which one is currently the cheapest one? And in doing that, I was building up a dictionary from all the nodes in the list. And for all those nodes in the list, right, I was looking up their F value, right? Uh, and then I was digging the min on that. So I was processing this every single time, right? Uh, in addition to that, I was not adding, you know, I just ignored the heuristic. I was just like, yeah, heuristic, whatever, right? You know, one. Uh, whereas I think most people, it turns out, were using another heuristic, which was like, hey, just draw a straight line from the, the node to the end. And, you know, the shorter that no the shorter that line is, then the more likely this is to be the correct path, right? Um, where I was like, eh, I don't care. You know, what do I need the heuristic for, right? It's like, it's true. If the heuristic is always one, you'll still get the right answer. So the, how does the heap Q help with this? Well, go back here. And instead of the open list, where is it, right? So the open list here, instead of just making it, what did we make it before? A set, right? Also, we don't, we don't really need the closed list. We got rid of that completely. Um, it wasn't doing anything. But instead of making it a set, we, we used a heap queue, something I never used before in my entire life until today. And what the, the way the heap queue works, let me demonstrate it. Uh, heap queue. Oop, heap queue. Uh, so we make a list. We make it, we'll call it HQ. It's just a normal list. But we interact with the list using heap queue function. So we'll do heap queue.heap push. We got to push onto HQ. And what are we going to push there? We'll put like a 0A, something like that, right? And then we'll put like a 1, a 1B, one and a 2C, and let's put a 0D, right? So we look at our HQ. It has all these items. It's just a, you know, it's just a list, right? It doesn't look too fancy. Now, if we were to do hq.pop, right, that's prop that's going to give us, I believe, the one B, right? But you can do a heap pop. And what this is going to do, oop, oh, I typed it wrong. Heap pop. Right? It's going to give us, look, zero A, zero D came out next, right? It's going to look at these numbers and prioritize which one gets popped off, right? Based on the lowest value. So that way, when we come here and it, instead of, you know, doing this processing every single time we come around the loop, right? We're just going to be like, hey, he pop, right? Um, you know, pop off the open list, the one with the lowest 
priority. Boom, we got it. No processing, no extra processing needed there, right? Uh, and then we can look up the F value. Now, the heuristic in addition, right? So we just implemented here a heuristic that uses the math hypotenuse to get the distance between the coordinate we're at and the end, right? And then what do we do is when we're pushing, when we're adding, right, here, the heat push, right, here's our pop, get the best node, and here's our push. We're pushing onto our open list the priority, and the priority is going to be the F, right, the actual cost to reach that node, plus, right, the distance between that node and the end. So when we're popping off here, right, we're not just getting the one with the lowest cost, although that might work, right? Let's see. If we uh, if we do this, is this still going to be fast enough without the heuristic involved? Let's find out. It is. Yeah, the heuristic still it isn't actually the thing that did it. It's the heap queue that did it, avoiding that processing every single time. But the heuristic, I think, does uh, improve the speed, I believe. Okay, not noticeably. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if you find yourself looping, and every time you loop, trying to find, you know, each time in the loop, not just picking something from an already ordered list, but trying to pick a high or low priority item from a list on each loop, then the heap queue is the answer. So that was ruining my performance. Otherwise, I had, I had the right answer besides that. <laughs> um, so yeah.